Today, we're not going to talk about Willy Wonka's world of chocolate. We're going to talk about the world of ice cream inclusions, which are commonly referred to as mix-ins. Yes, you heard me right. We are a company that makes the ingredients that go into ice cream. We admit we are partially to blame helping those ice cream companies make all those delicious flavors that you can't deny this dessert is so darn good that you break your diet promises and eat ice cream with the justification that we are rewarding ourselves. The members of the research and development team that you will meet will all have science degrees and are experts in the product development. I never imagined when I earned my degree there were companies like Denali making inclusions that go into ice cream. I started doing this in 1977 and to be honest, I still love doing it. And it's rewarding when people ask you what you do for a career and you tell them you make ice cream inclusions. They all smile and go, wow, how'd you get that gig? I tell them by accident, just trying to get a first job after graduating from college, but I've never regretted landing this gig since. At Denali, we develop all sorts of ingredients that are put into ice cream concepts. We make background flavor syrups, and fruit puris, which are used to flavor ice cream. We also make inclusions like cookie dough, flakes, and barks, baked brownies, baked cheesecakes, and fruit packs that all get stirred into the ice cream. Lastly, we make variegates like caramels and fudges that are swirled into the ice cream. We are not rocket scientists, but we are scientists that specialize in making inclusions so ice cream companies can offer a variety of delicious flavors to satisfy your sweet tooth. Have you ever wondered how cookie dough is manufactured for ice cream? Here at Denali, we manufacture over 100 different types of doughs. That doesn't just mean 100 different types of chocolate chip cookie dough. I'm talking flavors such as brownie, snickerdoodle, oatmeal, monster, peanut butter, and many more. These cookie doughs can be produced in a variety of different shapes, sizes, and color. Sizes range from as small as a five millimeter to as big as a two inch puck. Today, cookie dough is even offered in crazy shapes and fun colors. We have triangles, squares, ghosts, hearts, flowers, footballs, and of course, your typical round and square. So you can have a dough that is sugar cookie and flavored, but orange in color and the shape of a ghost. The sky truly is the limit on these. All of the delicious cookie doughs are manufactured to be ready to eat, even if they're produced with flour and eggs. We specifically use ingredients such as heat-treated flour and pasteurized eggs, which make our doughs safe to eat right out of the freezer. Heat-treated flour goes through a thermal validation process that eliminates foodborne pathogens. This is how the difference is between your flour in your kitchen from ours here. Pasteurized eggs are also heat treated to eliminate pathogens to extend shelf life as well. These processes are intended to destroy and deactivate organisms and enzymes that contribute to spoilages and any potential bacteria growth. Most of the ingredients used in cookie dough can be found in your kitchen, such as salt, sugar, brown sugar, and vanilla. All these ingredients help formulate doughs that hold up an ice cream and deliver a delicious experience. I'm going to talk about the flakes and barks that can be added to ice cream. Flakes and barks are offered in a range of size from about a quarter inch to an inch through a process called random break. Random break flakes and barks are produced in large sheets and then shattered into smaller pieces. Some flavors that you may find them in are chocolate, peanut butter, coffee, or lemon. Barks are generally thicker in width than flakes and have chunks of nuts or pieces of candy in them. Some examples of barks might be peppermint bark or nut barks like chocolate almond bark. So now that you know what flakes and barks are, I bet you're asking yourself, how are they made? Well, when we make flakes and barks, we first make a batter. Here in the lab, we make a small amount in a pot, but in our production facility, the batter is made in a large kettle. 
Some of our recipes for batters might include ingredients such as oil, powdered sugar, cocoa, milk powders, and possibly flavors. These ingredients are all mixed together until they're well blended. When the oil is added to the kettle, it is added at a warmer temperature in order to keep it in a liquid state. Coconut oil is often used as one of the ingredients. The neat thing about coconut oil is that it will stay solid until it reaches a temperature of 76 degrees Fahrenheit. This allows flakes and barks to melt in your mouth instead of melting in your ice cream. If we're producing a bark, this is when we would then add nuts or candy pieces. Once we perfect our batter, we then send it through depositors, where it flows into, onto a large moving belt. This belt is moving into a frozen tunnel that is being cooled to an extremely low temperature, somewhere around negative 150 degrees Fahrenheit. As you can imagine, this freezes the flakes or barks very quickly. At this point, it looks like large sheets of chocolate. As it continues to travel through the tunnel, it goes to the end, and this is where it meets up with something called a chunker. This is where these sheets of chocolate get shattered into random pieces. Next, the flakes and barks pass along a conveyor, where they are screened to ensure the proper sizing. The flakes and barks are now ready to be put into ice cream and enjoyed by all. Do you ever wonder how the baked brownie and cheesecake pieces that you find in your ice creams are made? The process for commercially producing these tasty treats is not that different from how you would make them at home. We start with sugar, flour, butter, or shortening. The first step is to cream the butter into the sugar. This step punches holes into the fat that sets the stage for the lift that happens in the oven. We add eggs and then flour. Adding the flour at the end prevents the baked good from getting too tough or crumbly. The major difference between home baking and a commercial baking process is the oven. We have a lot more firepower in our oven than you have at home. It's over 100 feet long. We use a continuous baking process, which has several advantages over the traditional tray baking you might find at a small bakery or use at home. The product from a continuous process is more consistent than tray baked items. In a continuous process, the product is covered in an enclosed, controlled environment the entire time. We have an amazing amount of precision over what we can do with the oven profile. We have two different temperature zones that we can independently adjust, and we can change the speed of the airflow. We can direct that hot air towards the top or the bottom of the product, which changes what the surface looks like. This is helpful if you want to make a crackly, nice brown topping on a brownie, or if you want a creamy, white, flat surface on a cheesecake. The continuous oven also has a nice wide oven belt. This improves the edge to center ratio and gives a more consistent product. We use cryogenic freezers, which is just a snazzy way of saying extremely fast freezing using liquid nitrogen. Finally, another element we consider is the size of the finished piece. Our typical piece size is between 3 8 and a half inch cube. We need to make sure that you get a piece in every spoonful. And who doesn't like the excitement that you get when your spoon hits a big old chunk of brownie in your ice cream? I'm going to give a brief overview of variegates, commonly referred to as spins, swirls, or ripples. These are the colorful ribbons in ice cream that not only add visual appeal, but come in an endless variety of flavors to complement about any flavor imagined. There are basically two types of variegates, water-based and oil-based. Water-based variegates have water as the main building block. Thus, they require thickeners such as pectin, cornstarch, or food gums, including xanthan gum, uh, guar, or locust bean gum to give them the viscosity or thickness needed to hold up as the rich vein found in ice cream. Up until a few years ago, these were the primary variegates used in the ice cream industry. This then brings us to oil-based variegates. These are composed of vegetable fat, such as coconut oil, as the main building block, which sets up firm when frozen. So unlike water-based variegates, these don't require additional thickeners to deliver the vein appearance. A good example of this is Blue Tracks Fudge which is known for its dark color and rich fudge texture that people of all ages crave. The most recent innovation in variegates is the oil-based textured variegate. Like other water and oil-based variegates, these typically have an added color and or flavor, but in addition, these contain some type of crumb, such as graham, pretzel, or cookie crumbs, that add a unique texture to the variegate, as well as enhancing the overall flavor. 
This type of arrogate is being seen more and more in the marketplace, bringing with it many new, unique, and exciting flavors. This wouldn't be complete if I didn't give a word of caution about using oil-based variegates. Unlike water-based variegates, always use care not to get any water in oil-based variegates because just a little bit can make them thick and sludgy to a point where they won't be usable and will need to be discarded. And no one wants that. You've heard the expression, oil and water don't mix. This also applies with variegates. Now I hope this gives you a little better understanding of variegates and that you never look at those colorful eye-catching swirls in your ice cream quite the same again. Now that we have delicious doughs, flakes, barks, baked goods, and variegates developed, how exactly do they get into the ice cream? Is it the Oompa Loompas with their magic stirring wands? Is it a chef with a squirt bottle of spin drawing amazing designs throughout each pint with tender, loving care? Does an ice cream shop employee hand place each chunk of dough into the pint in strategic places for a piece in every bite? No, the answer is quite different than those images convey. There is a science behind the machines that are used to incorporate mix-ins into the ice cream. There are two types of equipment used to accomplish our goal of adding the inclusions to our delicious frozen desserts. One, a variegator. Say it with me, variegator. This amazing piece of engineering pumps the ripple through the spinning outlet directly into the ice cream mix, and that creates a gorgeous and delicious design. Two, a fruit feeder. And no, it doesn't just add fruit. It adds all sorts of inclusions, from chocolate chip cookie dough, to flakes or pretzel bark, and even including large pieces of fruit. The pieces are added to a hopper, but that's like a big measuring bin, and an auger adds just the right amount of pieces to the ice cream. With this equipment, the ice cream has the perfect amount of variegate and inclusions, ready for our own eating pleasure. And it doesn't take an Oompa Loompa in the back of the factory to make it happen.